Good morning. My name is Katie Schmidt. Ten years ago, my husband Taylor and I, along with our seven children, left Brilliant behind to answer God's call in the jungles of Peru. At that time, we didn't fully understand how Our Lady of, Good, Our Lady of Champion and her message to Adele, go and fear nothing and I will help you, would have an impact on our lives. Six years ago, Our Lady once again asked us to leave the creature comforts that we had grown accustomed to behind. Indoor plumbing, concrete floors, roads, to go out once again in search of her children. We moved to the rural jungles of Peru, where the children have to hike two hours to get to school, where no one has indoor plumbing, electricity, or concrete floors, and where malnutrition and hunger is a daily occurrence. Currently, we feed 52 children daily. The children do not receive lunch at school, and many of them have to walk two hours home with an empty stomach. It was for this reason that we started Mary's Little Champions. Mary's Little Champions feeds the children physically and spiritually. After lunch, we offer classes to the students. The children are given opportunities to improve their reading and writing skills, as well as math, art, history, English, and most importantly, their catechism classes. Many of the children come from broken homes. They come to us searching for love and in the end find love himself. We can see him working in their heart. The children are gaining confidence and their grades are improving in school. They are now opening up about their daily struggles. On Sundays, we offer a Liturgy of the Word service with communion. The children come and they bring their mothers with them. It is such a beautiful sight to see the children be little missionaries in their own families. We are praying these families will enter into full communion with the church by receiving their sacraments. We have faith this will happen, but we know it will still take some time to fully convert their hearts to Christ. Another special blessing of the Multipurpose Center is we are able to host medical and dental clinics on site. The nearest clinic is two hours away, and it costs three days' wages just to travel there. For this reason, many parents decide not to vaccinate their children or to seek medical attention unless in an emergency. We host medical clinics quarterly with medical professionals who are donating their time and resources to treat these people in great need. We have been blessed to have a nurse on site daily. She is our volunteer teacher, and she has had to place a few stitches when classes are not in session. We have been blessed to have a good group of volunteers to help with this program. These volunteers participated in this exact program 10 years ago when we first moved to Peru. They now want to give children the same opportunity that they once had. It is such a beautiful testament to our work and to the program. I invite you to stop by the table after Mass to talk with me and my four children who are present. Please take a look at all the pictures that we have uh, on the table. We're selling the coffee that is produced by the local farmers and t-shirts that say Our Lady of Champion and Go and Fear Nothing. I will help you in Spanish, the same shirts that the school children wear. And there is a mission trip sign up, so please take some time after Mass to come and visit with us. Thank you for your time. Welcome to Holy Family Parish as we celebrate the most holy sacrifice of the Mass. The Christian Mothers and Ladies Sodality is hosting a raffle fundraiser. See the poster in the narthex for the cash prizes. Tickets will be sold after Mass in the narthex. This Friday, November 1st, is All Saints Day. 
which is a holy day of obligation. Mass times are 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m. on Friday. This Saturday, November 2nd, is a commemoration of All Souls Day, our memorial mass, where we remember and pray for all deceased parishioners from the past year. It will take place during the 4 p.m. mass on Saturday. This special memorial mass still fulfills your Sunday obligation and all are welcome to attend. Holy Family Parish will be holding an election day adoration on Tuesday, November 5th, starting with the 815 Mass through 8 p.m. There needs to be at least one person in church every hour during this adoration. Please sign up in the Narthic to pray for our nation. The Sacrament of Anointing of the Sick will be held after Mass. If you would like to receive healing, both physically and spiritually, please stay in your pew after Mass. There will be a special collection today for hurricane relief with proceeds going to Catholic Charities USA. Thank you for your generosity. Today in the Gospel, we hear about a blind man calling out to Jesus to have pity on him. As we enter into this Mass, let us all recall our imperfections and our need for Jesus. May Jesus allow our eyes to be open that we may follow him on the way. Our opening hymn is number 848 in the Gather. Gather us in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob, exalt at the head of the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world, with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng, they departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to the brooks of water on a level road, so none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Our response oral psalm is, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, crying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and the erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples in a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. This year, we have been reading from the Gospel of Mark on Sundays. This is the shortest Gospel, and I would hope that everyone uh, here would have at some point in this year taken the 45 minutes or so to read the Gospel and to know the Gospel of Mark. One of the questions that the Gospel of Mark brings up and talks about And the whole gospel is, it asks the question, who is Jesus? As readers, we are given the identity of Jesus in the very, very first line of the gospel. It says, this is who Jesus is. the, uh, The line is, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The word Christ means the Messiah. So we know from the very beginning as readers that Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one of God, and he is the Son of God. But none of the characters in the story know this as at all. And we watch them slowly learn who Jesus is. In fact, every time that Jesus does a miracle or he uh, does a healing or does an exorcism, uh, he tells the person who is saved, don't tell anyone about this. We even call that in theology the Markin secret. What he's trying to do is he doesn't want them to know that he, who he is yet. He wants to preach the kingdom of God. He has a message that he wants to get out before his identity is revealed. Because once his identity is revealed, it's going to change everything. So the entire first half of the gospel had people asking, Who is Jesus? Who is this man? So even as you're reading the gospel, you get absorbed into that very question. Who is Jesus? Our gospel today, our passage, it's the very turning point in the gospel of Mark. Let us just explore the story that we just read. We have a blind man. His name is Bartimaeus. He's alongside the road. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The disciples of Jesus tried to make him be quiet, but he continued to yell, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And it repeats that line in the, in the gospel. 
Then when he was called forward, he leapt up, ran to Jesus, and Jesus asked, What do you want me to do for you? Now remember, he was blind. He could not see. And he responded, I want to see. As I imagine this scene in my head, I just imagine him having this intense look on his face. I want to see. Jesus healed him immediately, and he followed Jesus on the way. Mark, the gospel writer, was brilliant. Bartimaeus said something that nobody had said yet in that gospel. He called Jesus the son of David. So if you understand that the time, uh, unless you understand, that's no big deal. But the future Messiah of God was to be a son of David. Bartimaeus was crying out that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was the Christ. Jesus was the anointed one sent from God to save Israel and to bring God to the world. In other words, that blind man saw more clearly than any other character in the gospel up until that point. He was a blind man who saw reality more clearly than anyone who had their physical sight. This was actually a turning point in the Gospel. Because the very next verse, we have Jesus now entering into Jerusalem and and everything is going to be moving towards the cross. Bartimaeus recognized that Jesus is the Messiah. And then the gospel of the, the the direction of the gospel changed. Now the first line of the gospel, remember, <coughs> Jesus was not only the Messiah, but also the Son of God. And the characters had to learn this as well. First they learned he was the Messiah, but then he gets to the cross. You remember the soldier at the foot of the cross? He looked up at Jesus after he had died. The earth shook, and there was a darkness that covered the land. And that soldier looked up and said, Truly, he was the Son of God. We now know who Jesus is. Our eyes are open. We are no longer blind. We see. We know who Jesus is. This story about Bartimaeus, the blind man, it was also special to me personally because I had an experience of this gospel. Just before I was confirmed, I was in high school and we had religion class and they wanted to teach us how to pray using Lexio Divina. Now, Lexio Divina is a way to pray with Scripture. You read the passage all the way through and then you read it again slowly giving time for each line to think about it, to meditate on it. And and then they even described what the situation would have looked like, what things smelled like, looked like, seemed like. And the goal was to engage your imagination and even place yourself into the story and so that you can even take up one of the characters. Now, up until this point, I had never prayed like that before. This was a new experience for me. Now, since that moment, I love praying like this. I love to read a story of Jesus, then place myself in as one of the characters and replay the entire story in my imagination with me being engaged. And in some some of my prayer, that's given me some wonderful discussions with Jesus because as one of the characters, I talk with Jesus. And that's what prayer is all about, talking with Jesus. So, I had never prayed like this before. 
And, and, and it, was, it was an exciting thing to do. I was probably around 16 years old at the time. And I remember walking into the church even thinking, I don't know what, the, what are they going to have us do? I don't understand. And be, almost being annoyed we're doing something different. But I followed directions. I closed my eyes. And I imagined that I was in the place of Bartimaeus. I was blind. I could not see. I could only hear. I was in darkness. And that's when I realized that when you are in a place of darkness, crying out to Jesus means a lot more. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. I imagine myself wanting Jesus so much that I was crying out for Him to save me. I had never done anything like that before. I never cried out to Jesus to save me. It gave me an experience that I had never had before, even though it was only in my imagination. However, it was prayer, so it was even deeper. Then I came, we came to the line, Lord, I want to see. Again, standing before Jesus in my imagination and calling out, I want to see. This again struck me. Before that, my relationship with Jesus Christ was mostly kneeling by my bed at night saying formal prayers. <clears throat> That's a wonderful thing. I encourage it for everyone, and I still do that to this day. But now I was standing before Jesus asking Him, I want to see. And I realized as I was praying that it was not just physical sight that I wanted I want to see. I want to understand. I want to know Jesus. What are you all about? How are you part of my life? I, I spent my entire life with Jesus, but at that moment I was asking Him to give me insight, knowledge, wisdom to know what it was all about. The last line sealed the deal. We were in the dark. We were praying. I was listening. And then it said that the Bartimaeus followed Jesus. In my, in my imagination, remember, I was thinking as if I was Bartimaeus, and I imagine Jesus just turning around and continuing to walk down that dusty road, and I followed I just had this imagination of Jesus in front of me, walking. Now the catechist, I don't even remember who it was, who was leading that Lexio Divina, had a very long silence, which allowed in my imagination just walking behind Jesus and realizing what that means. I realized I needed to really follow Jesus in my life. And for us as Christians, that means to love Jesus, to follow Him, especially in our daily prayer, going to Mass, and loving others as Jesus loves. Our Gospel today is about really seeing who Jesus was. We need to know His identity he was the Messiah, the Anointed One of God, and He was the Son of God Himself. Once we know who He is, we should also want to leap up and follow Him with our entire life. Because it is only then that we really can see. We are the disciples of Jesus Christ. So let us now publicly profess our faith. I believe in one God.
the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing God's mercy and love, let us turn to him with our prayers and our petitions. My bad. <clears throat> For missionaries who bring the light of the gospel to distant lands, may the Holy Spirit guide and protect them. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For our upcoming election, may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide us as we choose our next national, state, and local leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. For all people to see the value and dignity of human life in the womb of the mother until natural death. Let's pray to the Lord. For those who work the land, may God bless their efforts as they bring in this year's harvest. Let's pray to the Lord. For all affected by the devastation of Hurricanes Helene and Milton, Let's pray to the Lord. For this worship community, may God continue to help us grow in holiness. Let's pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially John Warachuk, for whom this Mass is offered, and for those who have no one else to pray for them, may they rest in eternal peace. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and loving God, we come before you with these and all of our prayers. Grant them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please join in singing our offertory hymn number 590 in the Gather, Christ Be Our Light.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity and made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in the company of the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Blessed is he, blessed is he, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat, eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, till you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <sighs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
turn and singing our communion song number 728 in the gather I has not seen We will now take up our second collection. And just remember, this is that emergency collection to help those who are affected by the hurricanes that we've recently had on the, on the southern eastern coast of the United States. The emergency may be over, but now it's time for the rebuilding, and that's what will have a big expense. So Catholic char charities will work with them. While we're taking up the collection, 
I just want to make the comment that immediately following Mass, we are going to have this sacrament of the anointing of the sick. That is, an, uh, that is a sacrament for anyone who may be having some illness or some accident that they're dealing with or some, uh, some sort of, uh, or, or even older age or if you're struggling with mental issues. If you need a reason for healing, this is the, your sacrament. So after Mass, after we're all out, I would ask anyone who would like to receive that sacrament to come forward, enter the first pews, leave a pew, every other pew empty, so the first pew, next pew empty, so that I can go in and out and give the sacrament itself. It's a very short ceremony. It's going to be uh, the prayer beginning, the actual sacrament for each person, and then, and then the Our Father in a prayer at the end. So just so you know what to expect. Uh, so with those bringing communion to the homebound, please come forward. You are being sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sick and the homebound members of our parish family. Go to them with our love, with our care, and with our prayers. Do this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and gentle healer. Thank you very much for doing this. This is very important. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. And just a reminder that as you walk out, today is our Booyah Day, so if you want to take a pail of Booyah home for lunch uh, and supper, please feel free. So as you walk out, just sort of be aware of that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We singing our song of going forth number 680 in the gather we walk by faith we walk by 